Good day everybody, welcome to today's video. Today's video, before we continue going down the rabbit hole of doing all the wiring on the LS swap that I'm doing to my 2003 Jeep TJ, one of the things we have to tackle first is grounding. In today's video, I'm going to use this painless universal body engine ground strap kit that I picked up and also a strap that I had previously from a, another project. However, I am not a big fan of reusing the old ground straps even though they may work. Still, I just find since I'm spending all this time and energy, I'm going to go with new ground straps just because diagnosing a bad ground can be very frustrating and you can go down a rabbit hole for a long time. So let's get started. So inside the painless wiring kit, we got this big massive ground strap and then it comes with four other small ones and some self tappers. For this main ground strap right here, we're going to go off the cylinder head. As you can see in the front here, there's a few bolt holes. Going to go off a bolt hole off the back of the cylinder head. And then to the factory Jeep, we, this is one of the spots right there. So what I'm going to do is just buff the paint off of that so I can create a good ground. Like I said, you don't want to get too crazy, but that should provide me with a good ground. All right, so I am going to go off the top corner of the cylinder head. One thing you want to do is that you don't want your ground strap, especially from the engine, to be tight. Because there's going to be some flex in the motor. So I just did engine the body. And I just cleared the paint off that one there. And I'm going to go body the hood. The hood uses a self tapper. But I'm going to put a quarter inch nut cert in it. And there's also a wiring harness ground too that I'm gonna have to install. <clears throat> Take this ground. Feed it behind all the wire and grab my bolt. Another reason why I like using the rib nuts instead of a self-tapping screw is that you drill through it, the rib nut is steel, and it provides a good ground surface. No sanding, no nothing. And of course, anti-seize your fastener to save yourself the headache later. So we got two grounds up there right now. The next one I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this ground cable and I'm gonna come off the head to the nut cert right there and then use one of these ones from the nut cert, our rib nut, to the one I put in the front here. And that's gonna complete the ground for there. So over here I got my ground strap, but I also got the ground that's from the headlight harness. We're going to put all those together and so that turned out pretty good. One more ground to go and everything will be grounded is on this side right here. I just polished up side of the accessory housing there and put a rib nut right down there and that should cover everything except for the battery grounds, which I'm gonna cover next, but we'll have the hood, the body, that fender, the front grill, and this fender, even though the only thing I think that needs a ground in this fender is the horn. So 
So with that final ground, everything is grounded now. Now this Jeep battery cable harness is the one that's factory in the Jeep for the 4.0 engine. I got to adapt it to work for my LS Vortec engine. So now I'm underneath and we're at the mercy of where these cables can stretch and wherever we can bolt on to, but where the starter is going to go, there is bolt hole right there, which I could feed this one onto there. So I'm gonna see if I can make that happen. So in the end, this is what I did. Took the one ground off the battery, went from the back of the bell housing, because that's where that bolt hole went that I was gonna originally attach it to. The other one stretched right up top. Now, if you have any questions about your ground, you just hook up a multimeter like I got here and you should be able to touch anywhere and get continuity. So I'm going to touch right there. Even over at the alternator. And as long as you can see continuity in your multimeter, that's a good sign that you're getting ground. So all my grounds are set up for right now. If I need any more, which I doubt I will, I'll add some later on in the future. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video about grounding. It's one of the most important things to do, especially when you're doing an engine swap, is make sure you got adequate grounds to ensure that everything's gonna work as it should. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys in the next one.